Thanks to England's victories in some of the major battles of the Hundred Years' War, 1337 to 1453, archers with long bows earned themselves a glorious reputation as killers of knights. Of course, the loud prefix is a blatant exaggeration or even distortion of the facts. However, the decisive contribution of English archers in the victories in the battles of Sloys, Crecy, and Agincourt cannot be denied. A sign of the quality of longbowmen is the fact that they were actively hired by other European armies. For example, the services of these archers were used by the rulers of the Iberian Peninsula, as well as the city-states of Italy. A lot of English archers earned a living by war in the famous mercenary unit, White Company Condottiere John Hawkwood. Even more of them were in the army of Charles the Bold, Duke of Burgundy, who fought the legendary Swiss. Interestingly, British archers owe their professionalism to strict laws, which, it should be noted, worked better in more centralized England. Whereas in France, some regions, while maintaining vassal dependence on the Parisian court, had considerable autonomy, and laws issued from above were rarely enforced locally. In England, as early as 1181, an assize on armament was issued, which required all free men in England to have arms and to go to war if necessary. Later, the armament assize was supplemented with details. All men of the kingdom must have weapons by class, and for many, this weapon was a longbow, which, accordingly, had to be able to shoot. Under Edward Brufferne, England banned all other amusements on Sundays except archery. Under Edward III, men over the age of 14 were required to practice archery for several hours each week. Compliance with the law was monitored by the local clergy. Those who did not comply were fined. And as we can see, such restrictions bore fruit. After the beginning of the Hundred Years' War, France tried to pick up this trend. There, Charles V issued a decree repeating the decree of his English vis-a-vis -vis Edward. On Sundays, all games except archery or crossbow shooting were forbidden. However, the most accurate shooters were rewarded. Moreover, the French did create their own units of archers with long bows. The king then ordered each parish to provide one capable archer, which were then grouped into squads of 200, 300 men. They were called free archers because they were exempt from taxes. In rare battles, free archers did not show themselves in the best way. Most often noted the lack of discipline in their ranks and a tendency to desert. Therefore, they were used to protect the borders and destroy marauding groups inside the French possessions. Thus, they existed for almost a century until they were finally disbanded. As we can see, the success of the English longbow kept other armies busy. At the same time, to conduct such bold experiments and create something of their own on the basis of other people's experience, you need a lot of resources that France had and she made an attempt, although it turned out to be a failure. The others took the path of least resistance and simply hired ready and trained archers. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell so you don't miss new exciting videos. See you in the next video, where we will continue to reveal the secrets of the gun world. See you soon.